Gotham Knights is no doubt one of the most anticipated games of 2022, but we don't know much about the game. Or do we? I examined tons of interviews, articles, and reports, and I found plenty of information about the world you'll explore, the RPG mechanics, the co-op, and more. Now, in this preview, I focus mostly on gameplay rather than story. Plus, I try to share details that come directly from the developers and that weren't obvious from watching the official DC trailers and gameplay overview. So without further ado, I hope you'll join me as I look at 18 cool details about Gotham Knights. One detail I'm surprised WB Montreal hasn't talked about more is that their version of Gotham City will be split into five boroughs. Unfortunately, we don't know much beyond that. Which boroughs will they be? How big are they? Will each one feature a separate supervillain? What we do know based on a PlayStation blog post is that these boroughs will be home to multiple criminal factions and that they're inspired not from the Gotham scene in the Arkham games, but from versions of Gotham seen in various comics, TV shows, and movies. And based on a quote in that same blog post from Gotham Knights creative director Patrick Redding, players can expect to discover, quote, places and locations that are iconic, that have history. Basically, even though Bruce Wayne is supposedly dead in Gotham Knights, it sounds like Bat fans will still feel right at home exploring Gotham City, even if they won't be doing it as the Dark Knight. Rather than force players into one area of the map early on, Gotham Knights will let you explore any of its five boroughs from the start of the game. That is to say, according to the developers, there will be no level gating. Instead, enemy levels will keep pace with yours. As they do, enemies will gain new abilities and present new challenges, but they'll never be so overleveled as to limit your exploration. Here's what Gotham Knights executive producer Fleur Marty had to say on the topic. Quote, there's no level gating of any kind in the game. So from the get-go, the whole open world is accessible to you and you won't be in a situation where you would like venture to a part of the city and you realize you can't go there because everybody's so overpowered compared to you. It's more the leveling of the player and of the enemies. Think of it more as a sliding scale that allows us to introduce and present new challenges to the player as they come back to the same areas of the city. And we're introducing new mechanics and maybe new types of enemies in the faction that they've already encountered. But there is absolutely no level gating." End quote. It's also worth noting that in the gameplay showcase, it was confirmed that even bosses will level up as you do, and that fighting a boss at, say, level 5 will be much different than fighting the same boss at level 15. It even sounds like they might gain entirely different attacks and defensive maneuvers as they level up. Pretty cool. If you look back at the Arkham games, they each had a plot device that allowed for Gotham City to be almost completely devoid of regular citizens. For example, if memory serves in Arkham Knight, Gotham had been evacuated. But in Gotham Knights, you'll see citizens walking the streets, in traffic, running errands, and taking the train home. In an interview with Game Informer, Marty said this is due partly to the fact that the game's plot takes place over several months. Quote, it's not a game that takes place over just one night in that kind of deserted city. This is a vast open world city and it takes place over many nights of crime fighting. You're going to encounter the citizens of Gotham City as they try to go about their business. That said, don't get the wrong idea. Gotham Knight's version of Gotham City will still be dangerous. In a separate interview, Marty said, It's still Gotham. It's a dangerous place. Our game takes place at night and there are criminals roaming the streets everywhere. So it's not a theme park experience where everybody's happy, but still, it was really, really important for us to have citizens and they are at the heart of this and those four heroes are here to protect them before anything else.
As you probably know, Gotham Knights lets you play as four characters. Batgirl, Robin, Nightwing, and Red Hood. You probably also know it's an action RPG, and as such, you'll be able to level up your character. But what if you play as just one or two heroes? Will the heroes you play become overleveled compared to the others? No. According to Marty, if you play through the entire game using just one hero, which you can do, the other three will keep pace. Quote, Since the story progression is shared between all the characters, it makes sense that you don't have to level them up from scratch every time you want to switch. She went on to say a moment later, since the other members of the Batman family are always present in some way in the background while you're out in the world fighting crime or unraveling the mystery, they don't stay inactive. So it makes sense that they are also progressing and getting stronger. If you've followed Gotham Knights at all, you probably know that co-op is completely optional. You can play through the entire game solo. You probably also know that co-op is limited to just two players. But it sounds like the decision to limit co-op to two players had a lot to do with the fact that WB Montreal didn't want to dilute a focused single-player experience. When Press Start asked Marty why they decided not to design for three or four players, she said, quote, we really wanted to make sure, first and foremost, that the single player experience would be absolutely flawless. Even though we care very much about the two player co-op experience, it's very important to us. When you have a four player brawler game, you start to be constrained to design levels that are designed around that and that would feel weird if you're just playing them solo, end quote. I don't know about you, but for me, this is very good news. I hope things like puzzles, combat, and traversal challenges are just as fun by yourself as they are with a second player. Fingers crossed. If you watched the gameplay walkthrough from DC Fandom all the way back in 2020, you probably know that co-op is drop in, drop out. You can join a friend at any time. But one thing you may not know is that you and your co-op partners in Gotham Knights will be able to play as the same hero. Plus, depending on how you and your friend have leveled up and upgraded your characters, your, say, Batgirl might be very different from your friends. So it's not like you'll be playing carbon copies of one another. However, the devs have pointed out that different heroes are designed to complement one another, so there might be certain gameplay benefits to teaming up with different crime fighters. For example, check out this clip where Batgirl sets up Robin for a finisher. Now, whether this is unique to these two heroes or if any two can perform this combo together remains to be seen. But if I had to guess, I'd say there will probably be specific moves that you can only perform with specific heroes teamed up. It's no surprise that Gotham Knights will allow you to upgrade your gear. But what you may not know is that you'll be able to upgrade three types of gear. As put by Redding, when we talk about gear, we're talking about your melee weapon, your ranged weapon, and your suit. This is interesting to me because, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think in all the previews, we've mostly just seen one weapon for each hero. For example, Red Hood has his pistols, which are obviously a ranged weapon and Batgirl has her short-ranged tomfas, which are basically batons. But Redding's quote seems to indicate that each hero will have an additional weapon, either ranged or melee, on top of what we've already seen. Moving on, as for suit upgrades, Redding did state that these will provide certain armor benefits, and I wonder if it's through suit upgrades that we'll also be able to unlock new gadgets. We'll have to wait and see. If cosmetics are something you like to unlock, it appears Gotham Knights has you covered. We know each hero will have various suits to unlock, but it sounds like there might be variations of the accessories that make up each suit as well. Speaking to comicbook.com, Redding said, quote, each of our heroes is gonna be coming with a big range of styles, and within a certain look, you'll also have variations in accessories, right? So you might have, for example, the style that you saw Batgirl fighting Mr. Freeze with. There'd be variations in terms of the cowl, in terms of gauntlets, in terms of other aspects of it that would fit within that style. Yeah. 
This might be a small thing for some of you, but if you're concerned about all the damage markers that appear as you beat up enemies or seeing enemy levels on screen, it sounds like these indicators, as well as potentially your entire HUD, might be fully customizable. When asked about why WB Montreal decided to include damage indicators and whether this was final, Marty had this to say. I want to mention that we'll have plenty of options for customizing whatever you want to show up on screen or not. So for whoever it bothers, they can just remove them. It's part of that RPG aspect that we're exploring. Based on several interviews with both Marty and Redding, we know that Gotham Knights will have a crafting system. But whether crafting is synonymous with upgrading your gear, I'm not entirely sure. If I had to guess, I'd say that yes, upgrading your weapons and your suit will be done via the crafting system. What we do know is that when it comes to your suit upgrades, at least some of those will be crafted, and in order to craft, you'll have to find certain resources out in the world. According to Marty, quote, while you're fighting crime or going through missions, you pick up blueprints and materials. So it sounds like one of the gameplay loops will be to find these blueprints and loot certain materials during the night, then head back to the Belfry, that would be your base of operations, to craft your chosen upgrades. Admittedly, this isn't really news. I mean, RPGs have skill trees, right? Well, surprise, so does Gotham Knights. According to Redding, yeah, you have special abilities in your ability tree that you'll unlock, and you can choose to unlock it in different ways. What those different ways are, I don't think we know just yet, but according to the PlayStation blog, you will, unsurprisingly, earn XP by completing open world activities. Okay, so when it comes to unlocking abilities, what will they be? Surely they'll affect different aspects of gameplay, from combat to stealth to traversal. I don't think WB has highlighted any specific abilities, however we did get a glimpse of a couple in the gameplay showcase. There's this one where Robin rains down some sort of firestorm. This one where he teleports a short distance. And as for Batgirl, we saw this one where she surrounds herself with a flurry of bats. There's also this brief clip in one of the trailers where Robin seems to cloak himself. That is pretty cool. Now, I don't know if each of these abilities are unlocked via the ability trees that Redding mentioned or via suit upgrades. And I can only assume that each character's abilities will tie in to their specific skill set. For example, Robin specializes in stealth, and it does appear that his abilities will help with sneaking. And Batgirl, well, she's more of a techie, so her abilities might tie in to, say, hacking. So this one's a bit more speculative, but I think it's a safe bet that the police, at least towards the start of the game, aren't going to be your friends. First off, the voice in the world premiere trailer says that you can't count on the Gotham City Police Department and that the GCPD haven't trusted us, as in the Batman family, since Jim died. Jim would be Commissioner Jim Gordon, who's also Batgirl's dad. So yeah, side note, in Gotham Knights, he's dead. Next, the text in the trailer says, from crime fighters to vigilantes. As vigilantes, by definition, you'll likely be fighting crime independent of any formal police help. And lastly, in her interview with GameSpot, Marty literally said the GCPD is, quote, going a bit rogue and chasing vigilantes. So it sounds to me like you might even have to avoid the GCPD, at least for part of the game. With four heroes to choose from, it's reasonable to ask, will the game's story change depending on who you play? The short answer is no. However, according to what Marty told PressStart.com, playing different heroes can change smaller parts of individual scenes, like the dialogue you might have with specific characters. Quote, the story doesn't change based on which character that you play as, but of course there are nuances because each of those characters have their own relationships with some of the other protagonists of the game. So those nuances play out there, and they each have their moments, but the story is the same. 
On the downside, this does mean the game might have less replay value, but it also means that you don't need to worry about missing out on parts of the story because you play as, say, Nightwing instead of Red Hood. One of the trends I'm most enjoying in newer open world games is how they make traversing huge distances a joy rather than a chore. Spider-Man's web slinging is a great example of this. So how will Gotham Knights make it easy to traverse Gotham City? According to the PlayStation blog, there are two main methods that will be available to each hero, the grappling hook and the bat cycle. But I did discover a very interesting quote from Marty that hints at maybe a third way to get around. Talking to GameSpot about WB Montreal's version of Gotham, she had this to say. Quote, as a crime fighter, a lot of what you do is patrolling the streets, but you're also gliding over it or parkouring through it. Um, did she say gliding? Of course, Batman could glide in the Arkham games, which made traversal super fun. And in this very short clip from the reveal trailer, it looks like Batgirl will be able to glide as well. Just to speculate a little further, the gameplay walkthrough did show Robin wearing a cape, just like Batgirl. So maybe at least he can glide as well. As for Nightwing and Red Hood, I'm no expert on either, so I won't speculate there, but in any case, I'm hopeful that traversal in this game works pretty much just like it did in Arkham. Games that are designed around a co-op component are often pitched as a persistent online world, aka a game as a service. But the developers at WB Montreal have insisted Gotham Knights is not a game as a service. In her interview again with GameSpot, Marty said, quote, The whole game is fully playable solo. You can play on your own offline if you want to. There's no always online. And on top of that, if you want to experience that with a co-op partner in a very seamless drop-in, drop-out way, you can do so. And so there are no game-as-a-service elements designed into the game. Given that co-op is such a big part of Gotham Knights, you might be wondering, if you do play solo, will an AI replace the now absent co-op partner? The answer appears to be no. PressStart.com asked Marty verbatim, if you're playing alone, does an AI character fill that second spot? To which she replied, quote, if you're playing solo, you're purely playing single player. While that wasn't a flat out yes or no, it sounds like you won't be accompanied by an AI unless maybe a story beat involves more than one hero. In Gotham Knights, following the death of Bruce Wayne, the Batcave has been destroyed. As a result, your new base is a secret hideout in Old Wayne Tower called the Belfry, and it sounds like you'll be able to return here at any point in the game, outside maybe key story moments. It also sounds like you'll have to return here whenever you want to switch characters. So what else will you do here? Well, speaking to IGN, Marty said, the Belfry is super central to our game because it's your base of operations. You get to go back there, analyze all the clues that you've picked up during your previous night, have a little chat with Alfred, craft your gear, and really prepare yourself for the next night of crime fighting. As for me, I'm particularly excited to find out more about analyzing those clues, as I've always enjoyed doing some good old fashioned detective work. Now, this is as speculative as I'll get with a video like this, but based on WB Montreal's Game Informer interview, it sounds like there might be, and I want to emphasize the word might, but there might be additional heroes scheduled to be announced as post-launch content. When asked directly, are those four characters really the core characters of the game, Redding responded, quote, we're going to have more details later about our post-launch lineup, but those are the four. Now, this interview was published all the way back in August of 2020, which seems way too early for any post-launch talk, but that also seems like a very odd response if there were no plans to add additional characters. So there you have it. Those are some of the coolest gameplay details I discovered about Gotham Knights. Did I cover anything you didn't already know? Or did I miss anything worth talking about? 
let me know in the comments. And with that, I want to thank you for watching this entire video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to drop a like, and if you want to see more content just like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. If you want to keep up with me and see what I'm playing, you can follow me on Twitter at Quest Mode Games. And finally, I want to remind everyone to never stop questing.